Welcome back to The Big Build, and in this episode, I'm gonna carry on making the oak frame, which will go on and support the roof. I'm making a profile box, and this involves breaking out some spare material that we've got. This is just some nine millimeter ply that was laying around the job. In fact, I think the bricklayers were using it as spot boards a little bit earlier on. And the idea is I'm gonna make a profile box to create a really nice shape on the main head beam that will support the roof. So I'm just breaking out the two sides now. They're just parallel pieces of plywood, exactly the same size. And the reason for that is because the profile box has two sides. And so what we do is we make them up by attaching them together, marking them out. And therefore, when you actually build your profile box, you've got two sides which are exactly the same. It's really quite straightforward and easy to do. The shape of the end of the beam, well, that's entirely up to you. You've got artistic license when it comes to things like that. I mean, this is actually an ovolo, which um, is hard to explain, but an ovolo basically means there's a rebate a quarter round and then another rebate and basically what that ends up is um, Ovalo architrave for example comes in all different shapes and sizes so sometimes they stretch out the radius bit and it's just a really nice detail you see this a lot on the end of old buildings when you see the joists poking through so like the Tudor timber frame buildings you often see this sticking through at first floor level and I think it looks absolutely brilliant and then what I need to do is because I don't carry a compass around in my pocket I've got enough stuff going on there in the new pouch um, I basically rip down a bit of ply use a couple of nails and make a very simple compass if you like or I think the bricklayers used to call it a trammel so that's just done by a strip of material can be anything ply choose your radius get a couple of nails pop them in and scribe it round now this is going to be a fairly long episode and that's because a lot of you guys who watch this and girls who watch these videos that i produce say we want to see more we want to see in detail and so i just thought i'd just leave quite a lot in now this episode could have been about an hour and a quarter long but i've reduced it down as much as possible and i really hope you enjoy it So what I've got here is a very simple profile box 
That is effectively the end of the beam. Now, I was taught this at college many, many moons ago, and we used to basically put the solid material in here, then using a handsaw, put lots and lots and lots of cuts around, and then we used to work it with the chisel and then make it really nice and smooth by scraping and all the rest of it. And it's, um, it's really satisfying. So I'm going to do something very similar to that, but I'm actually going to start by profiling it with a router following this uh, with a guide bush, etc. And then I might only just end up with a bit of stock in the middle to clean off, which is a lot easier than trying to go through all of it with a handsaw, especially with this green oak. So the principle is it will slide over the top of the beam. I'll clamp the beam on upside down and then I'll remove the stock to this um, template which has been made together which gives me two equal and in line square ended and it'll be lovely. So using this profile box that I made up I'm going to cut the length of the beam where I want it have a really nice square end then I'm going to slot over the top the box I'm going to use the router with a guide bush and I've got a long two flute cutter, but there's gonna to get to a point where I can only get around about 60 millimeters in from either side. This is 150 millimeters, that's gonna leave me 30 millimeters, but I do have what's called an extension collet. This very, very rarely comes out. It's the sort of thing that you might never buy. So this is an extension collet. So basically you're adding that into the collet of the router and it's giving me a whole load more. Now the only thing is, and I'll say this, if you're thinking about ever getting an extension collet, a half inch extension collet, they get a bit wieldy because you can never reduce this down far enough that the cutter is not exposed. So the cutter is always exposed. So it's really handy when you're doing your work to then turn it off, let it stop, put it down because it's always going to be sticking out. It's going to be super super careful of using this extension collet because obviously that when this base is it's obviously fully extended like this once that collet's in all of the cutter is sticking out because when you're using your router and you've got so much cutter if you're slightly out of square it's going to want to cut it out of square so to avoid that when I'm using this profile box on the end of the timber I'm also going to mount this off cut. So one of these off cuts that came from here, for example, I'm actually going to attach that into the section of timber that's going to be cut off. So I've got a flat base for the router on either side of the profiling box here. It's never going to do this because if it does that with a really long cutter on it, you're going to have problems. The other thing is, so for all the observant viewers out there, you'll say, so um, why don't you use a bandsaw? So there are a couple of bandsaws that you can get. Mafel, namely, is probably the best one which would do this. Now, I don't do this enough to warrant spending that sort of money. My friend Carl in Norway has got one and it's absolutely brilliant. So um, yes, it can be done like that. The other way of doing it is, which is which we use the profile box for as well. So this, with a profile box, the timber would be in it. I would clamp it or fix it where you're not gonna see the fixing. And then I'd use a handsaw and I'd cut all the way down to the plywood everywhere. And then I would clean it all out with a chisel, pare it all back. But that would take me, I'd imagine, one hour to do one end, or maybe longer, maybe an hour and a half. Whereas with a router, it's still gonna take a fair amount of time because I'm only cutting a pass of about 10 millimeters at a time. So that'd be six passes from this side, six from this side, then change the collet and then do two more passes or so. So it's still gonna take a bit of time, but it's a really nice job. So I'm gonna get on now and get that done. That's the last job apart from drilling the dowsing on this oak frame. Thank you. 
we'll carefully turn him over and we'll just take it. Sorry, mate. Yeah, the clamp will be fine. I'll just take this off of this side. We're going to mount it back on the other side and just finish it off from the other side. And we'll be nearly all the way through. All we'll have is just a, a small bit to finish out by hand. All right, go this way first. And then I'm going to carefully rock it like that. Pull yours across and then back down we go. Lovely. So that is as far as I can get to with the router. So basically, I'm nearly all the way through. So the, the job is now, I'll just disconnect this so we can dismantle this extension collet. So you saw when I was getting to the bottom there, my passes were getting smaller and smaller because the vibration, the length of that, we're running around here. And in this direction, I'm cutting literally against the grain in the worst possible way. From the other side, it's a lot smoother because it's pulling the grain out as it's going around. This way, I'm cutting into that end grain and it just feels a little, little bit more difficult. And the other thing about this is when you're using a router cutter like a two flute and you're cutting in passes, although you've got a lot of cutter, you're only ever using the end. And I've noticed that they tend to wear which is okay because as the rest of the cutter comes through it will clean up whatever the wear is missing so but there you go so all i'll do now is i'll just probably break this out with a chisel to get back to that and then i'll basically clean it off with sharp tools and get it done so we'll take this off turn it up the other way and finish it off by hand
just gently cleaning the rest of it off with a chisel and it's really amazing when you get into the zone and you do something like this the minutes fly by the hours fly by and indeed the days fly by too one thing i really enjoy about the craft of carpentry and joinery is the fact that you get taught something once you remember it it goes up into your mind and before you know it you find yourself doing something that you haven't done for years and years and in the case of making this profile box and forming the end of this beam this is a classic example something you just don't forget and when you do it you just think wow what an amazing thing to be able to do and remember and of course this is a bit of a modern take on it because instead of just using hand tools like we were taught back in the 1980s at college I've used a router all that's done is sped the process up so you can do all of this by hand it takes a little bit longer and it is so enjoyable and apart from this little tiny bit of cleaning up now where you just polish the end up it's a pretty amazing thing to do well thanks again for joining me on the big build it's been really nice to have you and keep checking back my channel subscribe if you're not a subscriber tell your friends because the more people who watch my videos the more I can do in the future